Jai Nitai Jai Nitai So with the blessings of the Vaishnavas although we're a very fallen worthless soul we'll try to glorify Sri Nityananda Prabhu today he has many wonderful pastimes but our Vrindavan Das Thakur said I have no way to finish writing about the wonderful pastimes of Nityananda Prabhu. Every moment there's millions of pastimes. So we'll just touch a little bit on some of the pastimes of Lord Nityananda. Om Ajnana Timurandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksurun Militam Jena Tasmai Sri Gurave Nama Sri Chaitanya Manu Bistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Sayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Svafadandigam Aradhanas Trinandan Thayvridam Yache Puna Puna Sri Marupa Padam Bhujo Dilisyam Janma Janmani Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nithananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasudhi Gaura Bhaktarinna Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Vanta Kalpa Trubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Vaivacha, Patitanam Bhavanevyo Vaishnavevyo Namo Nama. So there's a very wonderful verse from Actually, it's the first verse of Chaitanya Bhagavat, where we find lots of information, more than Chaitanya Charitamrita, we find lots of information about Lord Nityananda. It's a very beautiful verse to start our class. Ajana lambita bhujo kanaka vadato Sankirtanai kapitaro kamalaya taksho Visvambaro dvijabaro jugadharma palo Bande jagatta priyakaro karuna avataro so we're talking about two personalities in this verse. So in Sanskrit, we not only have singular and plural, we also have dual. And the dual, any word that ends in a, then the dual is o. So he says, ajana lambita bhujo, that both of them, ajana means up to the knees. Bhuja, we know bhuj, right? Huh? Their limbs are stretching up to the knees. Ajana lambita bhujo. This is considered a very, very auspicious uh, symptom in the body of great personalities. Ajana lambita bhujo kanaka vadato kanaka means golden. Kanaka vadato their luster, both of them. It says, oh, so it's talking about two personalities. Both of their lusters are like molten gold. Kanaka vadato sankirtanayaka pitaro uh, not pita but pitaro. Both of them are the uh, fathers of this Sankirtan movement. Hmm? We're going to hear about that in a little while. Sankirtanayaka Pitaro, Kamalaya Taksho. Huh? Kamala means lotus and Aksha means eye. Their eye is just like blooming lotus petals. Kamalaya Taksho. Visvambaro. Visva we know is universe. Ambara means who holds. So both of them, Visvambaro, not Visvambar. We know Lord Chaitanya's name, Nimai's name was Visvambar. But here it says Visvambaro, both of them are Visvambar. How is that? We know that Lord, Lord Chaitanya, he's none other than Krishna himself. Hmm? Who's Visvambar, who's holding the whole universe. Huh? But Lord Nityananda, he's none other than Balaram. Brajanda Nandana say, Brajanda Nandana jay, sachi sutta hoilo say, Balaram hoilo nitai. Hmm? So we know Balaram in his form of Nantashesh, he's, main, he's sustaining the whole universe on his hoods. Uh, so both of them, Visvambaro, Dvijabaro, they're both the best of the Brahmanas. Uh, we know Lord Chaitanya was the son of Jagannath Misra and Nitai, he was the son of Harai Pandit. Uh, Visvambaro, Dvijabaro, Juga Dharma Palo. 
Palna means to nourish, to care for, to protect, to increase. Huh? So these two brothers, we just heard, the, before they were Krishna and Balaram, they were Gopals. Hmm? But in this incarnation, Yuga Dharma Pal, Yuga Dharma Pal, oh, both of them are Yuga Dharma Pals. They're protecting, they're nourishing, increasing, uh, uh, augmenting this uh, Yuga Dharma of Harinam Sankirtan. Yuga Dharma Palo, Bande Jagatta Priyakaro. And they're the well wishers of this universe. They've given such simple process uh, for the fallen souls. And so especially we're going to hear a little Lord and Sananda, He saves the most fallen. Uh, that's why it's appropriate that I should be sitting here. I'm the most fallen, so that I should be sitting here glorifying that somebody who's so fallen can glorify Lord Nityananda uh, in this holy dham of Sri Vrindavan. Uh, this is most glorification of Lord Nityananda. Hmm? By the simple process, chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Huh? So the, the well-wishers of this whole universe, Jagatta Priyaka, Karuna Avataro, and both of them, they're avatars of Karuna. Karuna means compassion. Hmm. So just about 100 miles north of Mayapur, Navadip, in Birbhum district, there's a very sacred village called Eka Chakra. Hmm. And in that very beautiful dam, I've been there, a very beautiful green place, very sweet and wonderful, glorious place. There lived a very uh, pure Brahman name, Harai Pandit. Hmm. And he had a most chaste wife, so beautiful and chaste was Padmavati. Hmm. They lived there in this Eka Chakra Dham, very religiously. So on this 13th day of the bright half of the month of Magh, they were blessed with a very, very beautiful child. Uh, they were blessed with a very beautiful child, Nitai. And the whole village, at the time of his birth, the whole village was joyful. Everything was auspicious. Uh, the whole atmosphere was filled with joy. Everyone was so happy. Harai Pandit has got a wonderful son. And as he grew, he began to manifest so many wonderful qualities. Hmm? In his studies, he was very, very uh, diligent. Learned all the studies, especially the uh, religious studies. He wasn't so interested like other children in playing. Actually, he was interested in playing. But what was Lord Nitai's play, little Nitai's play, uh, he was always imitating with his friends the pastimes of Lord Krishna. Uh, in their childhood play, they would imitate the pastimes of Lord Krishna. One time they got all the boys together, they became assembly of demigods. One other boy came dressed as a cow and came before the demigods, uh, crying about the burden that was uh, weighing down on herself. Uh, so they didn't know what to do. All the assembly of demigods, they went to, there was a river nearby, so they presented that river was the ocean of milk. And one, and one boy who was hidden said, Do not worry, I shall appear in Mathura Gokul very soon to save all of you. Huh? Another time, in the middle of the night, they were doing their plays day and night. In the middle of the night, they, they uh, made a mock jail cell and they had uh, Lord Krishna appear in the jail cell uh, to Vasudeva and Devaki. Before that they did the wedding of Vasudeva and Devaki and the warning voice coming from the sky. We were listening to that for a couple of months <laughs> here in Vrindavan. Uh, uh, in this way they performed all the different pastimes. One uh, devotee became, one child became Putana, another climbed on top to drink her breast milk and one time they made some, some grass reeds uh, like a snake 
and Krishna came and chastised Kali and banished him from the river. They went to the bank of the river. This way they were doing all the pastimes of Lord Krishna huh? in so many ways. Even they did the pastimes of Lord Ram. Hmm? Huh? They showed Lord Ram being banished to the forest and Lakshman who was played by Nitai went with him. Hmm? Then somebody played Hanuman in the forest. They met Hanuman. Uh, and later they took all those monkeys. They went to the shore of the ocean. Uh, and they pretended to build a bridge across the river, pretending like it was the ocean. Uh, they charged across the bridge to uh, challenge uh, Ravan. In this way they performed all these pastimes. Uh, finally, they had, uh, Nitai especially liked to perform the, the part of Lakshman. Because huh? in uh, Ram Lila, uh, Balaram has become Lakshman. Hmm? So Ravana took his Shakti Shela weapon and he shot it at Nitai. And Nitai fell down on the ground. And he was practically lifeless. No one could see any symptom of life. All the, the children became frightened. They went, they tried to, to revive him. But Lakshman was completely gone. Nitai was completely gone. The word f went through the village. Harai Pandit and Pamavati came running there. They saw the lifeless body of Nitai. Everybody was crying. Nobody knew what to do. Finally one boy said, Oh, don't you remember? Be before the play he told us, I will fall unconscious. Then that boy playing Hanuman, he has to go get the... Uh, uh, Gund was it Gundamada? Gundamada mountain. He has to bring the Sanjeevani herb. Oh yes! Immediately the boy who was playing Lakshman, uh, playing Hanuman, he jumped up. He began to run. Uh, one sadhu told him, "Why are you hurrying so fast? You sit down, takes your bath, have some fruit." He said, "No, no. I have to, Lakshman is unconscious. I have to bring something to to save him." He said, no, 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 you should, shouldn't trouble your body so much. You take a bath and then have some fruits. Uh, so then, expecting the wor word of that mystic, he went to the river to take bath. Immediately a crocodile came. <laughs> and we can't imagine crocodiles, they have 1,000 per, per square inch pressure on their, when they bite. <laughs> uh, 1,000 pounds per square inch pressure. Uh, this crocodile and Nitai very easily f finished off that crocodile. Then he saw that mystic had turned into a big demon. He said, you saved yourself from that crocodile. Uh, but now you have to save yourself from me. And very easily Nitai defeated that demon. Then he went on, to, uh, on his journey. And suddenly some boys playing the parts of Gandharvas attacked him. Uh, very easily he defeated all the Gandharvas. Then he got the hill. Uh, and he brought the Sanjeevani herb. And then they called that boy who was supposed to play the Vaija. And they put the herbs underneath the uh, nose of Lakshman. And then they chanted. And then Lakshman immediately revived himself. And everybody was so shocked that they thought Nitai had left this world. Huh? And then Nitai revived himself. Everybody was very happy. In this way they absorbed themselves day and night. And everybody said, how does he know all these pastimes? Hmm? Where does he get all these things? And little, little Nitai just said, these are all my pastimes. <laughs> huh? In this day, gradually, one very wonderful sannyasi, effulgent sannyasi was wandering from holy place to holy place. He came to Eka Chakra Dham. Hmm? And in a secluded place, he took Harai Pandit and he said, look, I'm traveling to many holy places. I have no good Brahman assistant. Let me your Nitai come with me. And Harai Pandit, it was like somebody was asking for his life. Nitananda was his life and soul. Uh, he didn't know what to do. And he thought, in the past, uh, many persons have also been put in this dilemma, like Dasarat. He was also put in this dilemma. What should I do? If I give Nitananda away, it's like losing my life. Uh, but if I don't follow the words of the saint and I'll also be destroyed. What can I do? He went to Pabhavati and she heard the whole thing. He said, my dear, my Swami, whatever you think is best you do. 
So then with a heavy heart, he gave uh, Nitai's hand into the hand of that sadhu and they left. Uh, Harai Pandit barely maintained, he gave up eating grains for about three months, just only maintaining himself by the memory of Nitai. Uh, uh, then they traveled. Uh, Chaitanya Bhagavad gives a descri intricate description. There's probably even places I never heard of. They went to all the different holy places, here and there and here and there. They came to Braj also, they wandered all over Braj. Then they wandered, then at some point, Nitai left that sannyasi and began to travel on his own. Uh, and he was absorbed in the ecstasy of love of God, chanting the holy names. Somewhere along the way, uh, he saw a very effulgent personality surrounded by his disciples. And as soon as he saw him, he recognized the symptoms of love of God in the body of this person. This was none other than Madhavendra Puri, who's the root of the tree of ecstatic love of a Godhead. Before this, it wasn't manifested. Uh, but this was Lord Chaitanya, Nur Nityananda's uh, mission to manifest this ecstatic love for God. Uh, so as soon as they saw each other, they became stunned. Uh, they ran toward each other, each trying to touch the feet of the other. Then they, rolled, they embraced and rolled on the ground, crying and crying. Uh, all the disciples were amazed. They had never seen such ecstatic love for God manifest in any pers personality before. They were rolling on the ground uh, during the thirding themselves. The disciples were shocked. They'd never seen anything. Finally, they managed to calm each other down and they discussed many confidential topics together and they traveled together for some time and nobody can understand the topics of the, about Krishna that they discussed. Uh, in this way, they traveled to many, many holy places together for some time. Then Nitai, he headed toward Braj. And he came here to Braj, uh, and he began to manifest uh, pastimes of cowherd boy. He would go and steal butter from the houses of the Brishbasis. He would always stay wherever there was cows. He wouldn't sleep in ordinary places, but wherever there was Goshalas, he would stay there. He wandered all over Braj to all the 12 forests. Uh, uh, especially, he had a, uh, special pastimes at Ramgat, which is Lord Balar where Lord Balaram had his rasa dance. Uh, he was stealing butter and having wonderful pastimes there in Ramgat. Finally, he stayed here in a uh, place on the bank of the Jamuna called Sringarvat, where Lord Krishna did the Sringar, the decoration of Srimati Radharani. And he was just waiting. He knew that his... Uh, Nimai has appeared in uh, Mayapur, but he hasn't manifested his pastimes yet. His, uh, uh, his hasn't manifested his real mission yet. So he began to stay here in Braj, waiting for that appropriate time. Hmm. Finally, uh, when Lord Chaitanya, of course we know Lord Chaitanya, he went to Gaya and he met Ishvara Puri, the disciple of Madhavendra Puri. And he came back a God-struck man completely changed from it. before he was a great pundit uh, defeating everyone uh, and he was such a pundit he would defeat everyone then he would defeat himself and establish the opposite point <laughs> but now he came back everything was Krishna 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 then uh, Nitai thought now is the time to go and he traveled all the way to uh, Mayapur and just where the there was the old uh, Prasadam Hall is now for food distribution. Just after that, the next mutt down is Gosami Mutt. That is Nandanacharya's house. He stayed there at Nandanacharya's house. Hmm. And Lord Chaitanya called all his devotees. He said, some great personality has come to uh, Navadweep because I had a special dream last night. Uh, I was... Uh, I came out of my house and some huge personality dressed in blue garments and very bright white colored body with the earring in his left ear uh, and carrying a great big pole on his, on his arm and a grand chariot. He came to this place and he said, Is this the home of Nimai Pandit? In a very loud voice, Is this the home of Nimai Pandit? over and over again, so I can understand that a great personality has come. 
So you please find him. He especially gave uh, uh, Haridas and uh, Srivas Pandit. You find out this great personality. They went all over Navadvip. They couldn't find out the information of anybody. Hmm? They couldn't find out that anybody has arrived from outside of Navadvip. So they came back. So Mahap, because Mahaprabhu wanted to show that Nityananda Prabhu was very uh, uh, confidential. Only by the mercy of Lord Chaitanya we can understand Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. By the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu we can understand Lord Nityananda. So then, next morning, Lord Chaitanya said, "You follow me." They went with Kirtan down the way to Nandanacharya's house. There, on the brand of Nandanacharya's house, they saw this wonderful personality who was absorbed in his own mood. Hmm? Uh, he didn't see Nimai had come. So he told Srivas, chant one verse, especially this verse from Srimad Bhagavatam, Bahapitam Natabaro, not Bahapitam Natabara Vipo Karnika Karnikayam. Hmm? As soon as that entered Nityananda's ears, he rolled on the ground, he began shouting and dancing, and, and both of them saw each other. Uh, when they saw each other, their natural love for each other was awakened. Uh, they embraced each other and rolled on the ground. Everybody was astounded. What is this? In this way, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu manifested and Lord Nityananda's glories to, before all the Vaishnavas. Uh, then they started their Sankirtan pastimes, just like sometimes we sing. Eshikadiya sabnadiya firche nechi gornitai. Eshikadiya sabnadiya firche nechi gornitai. Radha Krishna bol bol bolore so bai. Radha Krishna bol bol bolore so bai. They manifested so many wonderful pastimes, especially for our sake. They manifest this pastime of Jagai Madai, huh? that they were the most fallen. Huh? No one more fallen than them. This, this pastime shows that even those persons that uh, Lord Chaitanya rejects, Lord Nityananda can save. Because we know this pastime, we won't go into detail, because everybody knows this pastime. And finally, when they broke, uh, when Madai, Madai, because he became mad, that's why he's called Madai, huh? he broke Nityananda's head with his pot. And you know how cut on the head, it bleeds like anything. Nityananda's face was completely, half was completely red. Uh, his whole half kurta was red. Uh, and uh, when this news came to Lord Chaitanya, he immediately came running there. He pulled out his Sudarshan chakra, ready to cut Madai into pieces. Meanwhile, Jagai, he, he's Jagai because he's Jagai. <laughs> he said, what have you done? What have you done? <laughs> huh? He was telling him, please chant. He said, you get out of here, you dirty Hare Krishnas. We don't want to listen to this name of God and we don't want to have anything to do with this. Uh, and then Lord Chaitanya appeared with his Sudarshan Chakra. Uh, and Lord Nityananda stopped him. He said, you, Patita Pavana Hetu Tavavatara. You've come to save the most fallen. In Kali Yuga, everybody's like this. How can we preach? We'll just go on the street and shoot. You take a Bhagavad Gita. No. <laughs> <laughs> So then Lord Chaitanya, since he saw that Lord Nityananda has put his, made up his mind to save these two rascals, huh, he sent that, that Sudarshan Chakra back. <laughs> huh? And Lord Nityananda picked up those, those two had fallen. They'd fallen on the feet of Lord Nityananda. The, please save us, please save us. And Lord Nityananda dropped them on the feet of uh, Lord Chaitanya. Lord Chaitanya embraced them. You just imagine. Huh? And he said, you give up all your sinful ways and you chant the holy name. And they jumped in the air, began dancing and chanting and dancing and chanting. They became such great Vaishnavas that if you go on Nabadeep Mandal Prakama sometime, we come to one place called Jagai Madai Ghat. Even they named a God after them. This is the power of Lord Nityananda. Huh? That even those who reject Lord Chaitanya was ready to cut them to pieces. But Lord Nityananda saved them. So this is our... Why we're all sitting here in this holy dham of Sri Vrindavan Dham at the lotus feet of Srila Prabhupada is only the mercy of Lord Nityananda. And Srila Prabhupada is the manifestation of that mercy of Lord Nityananda. Srila Prabhupada ki. Huh? So finally there's so many, we could go on and on and on, so many wonderful pastimes. 
Finally, Lord Chaitanya, he went to Katwa, took sannyas, and then he went to Puri. On the way to Puri, we know Lord Nityananda broke his danda. He's the Supreme Personality of God. What is the use of his taking sannyas? So he broke his danda. Uh, uh, and then every year, all the devotees would come to Puri for Rathi Yatra. Uh, and Lord Nityananda would also come. And one time, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took him to a confidential place, and he told Nitai that actually, I promised to save everyone in this world, but I took sannyas and left Nabadweep. I left Bengal. Uh, you have to go back uh, and save everyone, as I, ca I can't leave here. So you have to go back and save everyone. So Lord Nityananda, with a heavy heart, he left, he gathered all his associates, who were nothing, because all the associates of Lord Nityananda are Gopals. Especially there's 12 that are very famous, the 12 Gopals, Vadash Gopal. And they were completely absorbed in Krishna Leela in their hearts. And they started off toward Bengal. And they were just uh, chanting and dancing and talking about Krishna. And uh, they, were, they were just walking down the road in a funny way, uh, not walking straight. And they were just wandering here and there. Finally, they came out of their ecstasy. They asked someone, where is the Ganga? You're going to the Ganga? You missed the turn 10 miles back. <laughs> <laughs> So then they turned another way and again they were just discussing Krishna and chanting and they went along and they said, they asked, they came out of the exit, they asked someone, where is the Ganga? Ganga? <laughs> You're way off track. <laughs> you have to go this way. With great trouble, they finally reached the bank of the Ganga and they came to a very famous place called Panihati. Hmm? And in Panihati they began to stay at the house of uh, uh, Raghava Pandit. Hmm? One day, Nitai, he desired that I want to have so many ornaments. Hmm? I want to decorate myself with so many ornaments. And suddenly people out of nowhere just came from the town and began to offer so many golden rings and golden crowns and bracelets, silver, diamonds, pearls, rubies. Lord Nityananda had a ring for every finger. He had rings on his toes. He had a ring on his ear. He had somebody brought beautiful blue cloth. And he made a big blue turban and he made a blue dhoti. Completely opposite. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was so renounced. We know the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya. But Nitai completely manifesting opulence. Hmm? Then they started Nam Sankirtan in the house of Raghava Pandit with all the devotees. Finally, Lord Nitai said, Let's go in the streets. And they went through the streets doing Nam Sankirtan. Whoever Lord Nityananda glanced on, that person fell on the ground, struck with ecstatic love of God. This is the mercy of Lord Nityananda. Just by glancing on anyone, they would get ecstatic love of God. All the little children became just like cower boys. They were running around and dancing. They began to rip up trees from the ground and play with them just like cower boys. And nobody, even seven men couldn't hold them. They became so strong. Seven men couldn't hold them from... Uh, uh, ripping up trees and doing things like this. All completely, uh, they became mad and just by the influence of Lord Nitai. And of course we know in, when the word got to uh, Raghunath Das Goswami that uh, Nitai is in Panihati, then he came there to get darshan of Lord Nitananda. Uh, and Lord Nitananda punished him with the Dadi, Chira Dadi Utsav. Uh, and show that without getting the mercy of Lord Nityananda, he wanted to go straight to Lord Chaitanya. Uh, but Lord Chaitanya had sent him back. He, Lord Chaitanya came to Advaita's house and he met him there. He said, no, you go home and pretend to be a pounds and shilling man, but don't come. Uh, but then Lord Nityananda uh, chastised him to do this chitta dayutsav. Uh, then he, put, he brought Lord Chaitanya there. He put the feet of Lord Chaitanya and Lord, on Raghunath Das's head. Uh, and this way, by the mercy of Lord Nityananda, we get the mercy of Lord Chaitanya. Uh, so then from uh, Panihati, he went a little further south toward Navadvip. He came to Kardaha. In Kardaha again, they were doing Sankirtan through the streets of the town. And everybody, Lord Nityananda, glanced on God, love of Godhead. Just by his glance only. And this way he spread the Sankirtan movement in Kardaha. Finally from Kardaha, they came to Saptagram. In Saptagram, they stayed at the house of uh, uh, Udaran Dutta. 
who was from the Suvarna Malik family. They were gold merchants. And this is the same Malik family which our Prabhupada is descended in. That Udharan Dutta is his ancestor. Now see the Prabhupada, same Malik family. Hmm? And again through the streets, again glancing at everyone. Uh, from Saptagram he finally came to Nabadweep and began doing Sankirtan in Nabadweep. In Nabadweep, there was, he found a place in Mayapur that was very secluded where there was a wonderful pure Brahma name, uh, Hiranya Pandit. He lived far in the jungle, very secluded place. So Nitai thought this is a nice place to stay. He would go outside for doing Harinam, but he would come back and stay in a secluded place. Hmm? And this way he manifested so many wonderful Sankirtan potencies. In Navadvip there was a young Brahman who was actually only a Brahman in name only. Hmm? He was a meat eater, wine drinker, womanizer, every different... He was the, in fact, he was the commander-in-chief of all the Dakwites of Navadvip. Hmm? He saw Lord Nityananda with all this gold and silver and diamond and pearl. Hmm? And he called all his associates together. Why are we suffering? Mother Chandi has given us a great opportunity. This crazy uh, Avadut has come. He's got so much gold and silver. Even if we add it all up, we can't imagine how many lakhs of rupees he's got. Huh? And he lives there in the forest with no one around. Mother Chandi has given us a wonderful opportunity. Tomorrow night we'll all meet at such and such place. Hmm? We'll surround his house. And when he falls asleep, we'll raid him. Within a few minutes only, we'll be able to loot all of that gold and silver. We'll become rich. Huh? All the Dakwais were very happy. They got swords and spears and choppers of all sorts. Huh? And they met at the, the agreed place. And they went through the forest to Hiranya Pandit's house. Hmm? Then they stopped underneath the big tree. And they sent one to spy. And that spy went there. He looked, peeked through the window. He saw Lord Nityananda was taking his meal. And all the devotees were chanting. Everybody was chanting, Hari Hari, Hari Hari, Hari Hari, Hari Hari, Hari Hari. So he came back. He said, this is a perfect opportunity. He's eating his dinner now. This means soon they'll all go to sleep. Then we'll... Uh, rob them of all their things. So all the Dakwais sat down underneath that tree and they, by the um, Lord's mystic power they all fell sound asleep. They were waiting and waiting they all fell sound asleep. Huh? Suddenly in the morning the crows began to call. Huh? They all woke up the whole night has passed. How has this happened? Hmm? Huh? Well, you were the first one to fall asleep. Uh, yeah, and you were up all night long too? <laughs> what are you talking about? Then the master of all the Dakoids said, Look, for, don't argue. Whatever has happened has happened by the, by the will of Chandi. Huh? Probably because we didn't worship her before we came here to do our thievery. So now, to, tonight, today, we will worship Chandi with all meat and wine and so many offerings. Then tonight we'll again meet and catch them and become rich. Uh, so they went, uh, they all went home, took their baths in the Ganga, they went home. This is an, even though they're Dakwaites, they're so fortunate, get to take bath in the Ganga every day. <laughs> <laughs> so they went uh, to Chandima with so many horrible offerings, they made offerings and everything. They said, now we're going to certainly get success. Huh? Hmm? So again in the night, they all met. They brought their choppers and swords and spears and knives and daggers. And they all met at a certain place. And then they crept toward Haraniya Pandit's house in the, alone in the jungle. And when they looked, they saw these huge personalities walking like drunken elephants. Hmm? with all types of marvelous weapons, powerful weapons on their shoulders. They were all glancing with lotus petal eyes in all directions and chanting the name of Hari Hari, Hari Hari, Hari Hari. <laughs> they had never seen such great, huge people before in their life. They wondered where do these guards come from? 
Huh? Somebody said, oh, Nitai, Nit, uh, Nitai has guessed our intentions. He hired these guards from somewhere. No, no. Uh, uh, this, uh, this, uh, s s some, uh, many people come to visit this so-called Gosai. Uh, he calls himself a Gosai, but look the way he dresses. Look at how he eats. What kind of Gosai is this? So maybe somebody has come uh, to uh, visit him, some great military commander. Hmm? This way they all began to speculate. And the uh, leader of the Dakoi said, what is, quit, stop this quarreling. Whatever has happened, it happened by the will of Chandi. Uh, so let us wait a few more days and see if these guards go away. Then we'll try to uh, rob him. So after 10 days, again, they made a pact to meet at that tree again and try to attack Nitai. Uh, so it just so happened that night there was no moon, there was dark clouds, it was completely black. Nobody went out on the street that night. Only these Dakoits went through the forest. As soon as they got to Rani Pandit's house, they became blind. They were all stricken with blindness. They couldn't see a thing. One of them fell where, the, where they throw out the dirty plates and they fell in that ditch hmm? and leeches and mosquitoes and scorpions bit them. Somebody else uh, uh, fell into the place where they passed stool and all kinds of horrible smells and horrible bugs and scorpions began to eat them. Somebody else fell in a ditch and broke all his arms and legs and this way they were all crying. Uh, and if that wasn't enough, then Lord Indra, seeing that they've come to steal from Nitai, he sent torrents of rain. Torrents of rain began to fall. They couldn't see a thing. They were totally blind. Somebody fell into a whole patch of thorns. He couldn't move because every time he moved, he would get stuck more and worse. And like this, they were suffering like anything. Then uh, Indra sent hail. They were, this hail was coming down. They were just being tortured like anything by the hail, uh, and they were crying and crying. Finally, that Dac the chief of all the Dakoids, he came to his senses. He said, everybody says uh, that this Nitai is not an ordinary man. Hmm? Certainly, he must be the Supreme Lord himself. Oh, we have done a great offense. What can we do? The only way we can get free from this offense is to surrender to him alone. And all the Dakoids, they also realized, yes, this has been He's actually the Supreme Lord. Everybody tells Nitai is not an ordinary person. Uh, must have been by his mystic power. The first night we fell asleep, we didn't recognize it was by his mystic power. The second night, uh, all those, um, he manifests all these guards. And this night he's manifest all these horrible things. We're suffering like anything. As all the Dakoids began to come contemplate that, Lord, that Nitai is none other than the Supreme Personality of God in himself, suddenly they got their eyesight back. And the, guard, the leader of all the Dakoids said, the only thing we can do uh, is surrender unto the lotus feet of Lord Nityananda. Hmm? So they all went to their homes, took their bath in the Ganga, then they came back to Haranya Pandit's house. Hmm? Everybody saw this Dakoid has come. Hmm? They, all the devotees were struck with fear. And the Dakoid, Nityananda was sitting there, hmm? uh, enjoying the company of the devotees, enjoying the Nam Sankirtan. Uh, when this Dakoi came running into the house, raised his hands in the air, fell down at Lord Nityananda's feet. Please save me! Please save me! There's no one more sinful than me. Uh, even I've tried to attack you. Please save me! Please save me! Hmm? Everyone was astonished at the behavior of this Dakoi. Uh, they couldn't believe. Somebody said, no, he's just pretending to, to get us off guard and steal from Lord Nityananda. And the others said, no, Lord Nityananda can save the most fallen. He's been uh, saved by Lord Nityananda. Lord Nityananda said, why are you behaving like this? Lord Nityananda smiled with a very charming smile. He said, why are you behaving like this? Hmm? He said, my Lord, uh, I'm born in a Brahmin family, but I'm a Brahmin in name only. I have done so many sins, there's no uh, end to the list of my sins. There's no way, I, only if you show your mercy upon me, can I be saved. Even we've attacked you and we still couldn't recognize. One night we all made a deal to come here and steal from you. Uh, by your mystic power, we all fell asleep. That time we couldn't understand your power. We all fell asleep by your mystic power. 
Another time we came, we saw these huge guards that you manifested. We couldn't understand that they were your manifestation of your own power. We are so fallen. Another night, last night we came, we lost our sight. We were bitten by scorpions, by bugs and leeches. We had hor tor tortured by hail and rain and mud. Huh? We didn't understand. Now we understand you're the Supreme Personality of Godhead. You've come to save the most fallen. We're the most fallen. There's no list. I don't know what fate is awaiting me. And Lord Nityananda placed his lotus feet on the thief's head. He said, don't worry. Anyone who's taken shelter of me, uh, he'll never be uh, vanquished in this world. And this way people were astounded that this, the king of all the Dakoids had surrendered to Lord Nityananda. So Lord Nityananda's glories were increased like anything. Huh? In this way, so many wonderful pastimes are there of Lord Nityananda described by our Vrindavan Das Thakur. We could go on forever, but uh, we'll put our voice to rest here and we'll ask Vyasaki to please come and continue glorifying Lord Nityananda. Lord Nityananda Prabhu Ki! So this gives us some hope that even though we're the most fallen, by the mercy of Lord Nityananda, somehow or other, will be saved from this sansar, this blazing fire of material existence. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna. Hare Hare. Hare Rama. Hare Rama. Rama Rama. Hare Hare. Om Gyanti Mirandasya Jananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Jena Tasmai Sri Guru Vena Maha Mukam Karoti Vachalam Pangum Laikaya Tegirim Yat Kripatam Aham Bande Sri Guru Dinatarinam Vanchakal Petarubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhyevacha Patitanang Pabanebhyo Vaishnavebhyo Namona Maha Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhara Sri Vasadi Gaurabhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So Coming to speak after Dina Bandhu is very intimidating. <laughs> but we shall try to say something because he's already said everything <laughs> that I was planning to say, so I have to say something different now. <laughs> so let us first look at this beautiful song by Nartam Das Thakur. Nitai pada kamala koti chandra sushitala that the lotus feet of Lord Nityananda is more cooling, more soothing than millions of full moons because the full moon is the most beautiful day or I should say the most beautiful night it's very soothing, very beautiful and the lotus feet of Nityananda is more soothing, more beautiful, more blissful to see and to be near than 10 million full moons. Jai Chaya Jagata Jura And to be in the shade of those lotus feet, that's the goal of life. That's the ecstasy, that's the ananda, to be in the shade of those lotus feet. Then he says, Henonitai Vinebhai Radha Krishna Paitenai. That without taking shelter of those lotus feet, you're not going to get the mercy of Radha and Krishna. You cannot come to Radha and Krishna and expect to get their mercy and to enter into their intimate Leela without first getting the mercy of Lord Nityananda. Heno nitai vine bhai, oh my brothers, oh my friends, oh my 
family members. Without Nityananda, Radha Krishna Paitenai. Therefore, Drida Kori Taro Nitai Pai. Drida Kori Nitai Pai. You want to hold on very firmly to the lotus feet of Lord Nityananda. So this is very important. You know, Srila Prabhupada, he says here, the whole idea is that we are ISKCON. And in ISKCON, we're worshiping Gaur Nitai, Lord Nityananda, and Lord Chaitanya. They're on every altar. The Panchatattva is on every altar, in every temple, in every country, in every city of the entire world. And if I find it very, uh, how, what's the word? A little strange, when you go into a Gaudiya Mat temple, there's no Lord Nityananda. They have, Gaur, they have Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Radha and Krishna, but no Nityananda. And of course they'll say, well, we're trying to establish that Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Radha Krishna Nahe Anya. That's what we're trying to establish. But we're also establishing that. But in order to establish that, we don't eliminate Lord Nityananda because Nitai Chara Radha Krishna Paitenai. Without Lord Nityananda, you're not going to get the mercy of Lord Chaitanya. You're not going to get the mercy of Radha and Krishna. You can't ignore or you can't jump over. So here he's saying that Narutam Das Thakur, who's the great Acharya in our line, he's saying that without Lord Nityananda, we're never going to be able to enter into the intimate pastimes of Radha and Krishna. Then he says, Ahankare mattahoya nitai pada pasharia asatjere satya korimani asatjere satya korimani He's saying ahankare by our false ego mattahoya we become mad nitai pada pasharia and we n overlook or neglect or forget the lotus feet of Lord, Ch Lord Nityananda, and then a satyare satya korimani, and in this way, that which is truth, that which is untrue, we accept as being true. In, in other words, it's like Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, that those who are conditioned souls, they don't know what to do and they don't know what not to do. What is dharma, they think they take as adharma, and what is adharma, they think is dharma. So without the Lord's lotus feet of Lord Nityananda, this is our situation. We're thinking it's dharma, but it's adharma, because Lord Nityananda is not there. Nityayer koruna habei brajay radha krishna pabei And then he repeats himself. He says that when we get the mercy of Lord Nityananda, then we will be able to enter into the intimate pastimes of Radha Krishna in Sri Vrindavan Dham. So he's repeating himself. He's stressing this point. Narutam Das Thakur is emphasizing this point so more, much. And then again he says, Daronitai Charana Dukani Daronitai Charan Dukani. Therefore, again, I've really got to hold on to the lotus feet of Lord Nityananda. I can't forget him. I can't overlook him. I can't ignore. It's very important. So Narutam Das Thakur, he doesn't have to repeat himself, but why is he repeating and saying the same thing again? Because it is so important. He wants to get it through our thick skulls. Nitayer charana satya. That the lotus feet of Lord Nityananda are the absolute truth. 
satya, its reality. Tahar seva kanitta, and to be his servant is an eternal service. Eternal service is to serve Sri Nityananda Prabhu. Nitai pada sada koroash. And again he says, therefore, my only wish, my only desire is to always take shelter of the lotus feet of Lord Nityananda. How important is this being stressed by Nartam Das Thakur? And Nartam Das Thakur, he knows what he's talking about. He's telling us, he's giving us this highest tattva. Then he says, Rakoranga chara neropash, Rakoranga chara neropash, Rakoranga chara neropash, Rakoranga chara neropash. So may I always remain by those lotus feet, and all my life, all my enjoyment, all my happiness, everything in my life is dependent on these lotus feet. So this is so important. So we really want to understand Lord Nityananda. So Lord Nityananda, if we look at his life, we see that it three phases, three phases of his life, and we'll go through each of those three phases to try to understand him in a very deep way. Now the three phases that Lord Nityananda experienced in his life, we also experience those, but not at the same level. <laughs> so his first level is the Poganda level, or the Balya Lila, his childhood pastimes. But what childhood pastimes he had? He knew the Shastra inside and outside. He knew everything about Krishna Leela, about Ram Leela, and he inspired all his children, friends, all his childhood friends, in the same way. They all became mad after Dharma. And their whole life was Dharma, 24 hours a day, moment to moment to moment to moment, Be just because Nitai was like that. He was their leader. So in Ek Chakra Gram, where he appeared in the house of Harai Pandit and Padmavati Devi. He was the love of everyone in that village. Everyone loved Nityananda. All the other families loved Nityananda because they saw how their children were so much benefited by the association of Nitai. So they loved him. He was the love of that village. And everyone was astonished. How does he know all this Shastra? All the Krishna Leela, all the Ram Leela. Where did he get all this information from? And how can he convey it to all these other children and get them totally absorbed in it too? There was no nonsense that when we're children, we engage in nonsense. But those children, they were engaged in the Nitya Tattva. Because those children, Rakuranga Chara Neropash, they were enjoying the association of the lotus feet of Lord Nityananda. They couldn't live without the lotus feet of Lord Nityananda. So in Ek Chakra Gram, it was a very blissful village. It was a dharmic, the most dharmic village at that time due to Lord Nityananda's presence. And regularly, nightly, the children would put on these plays and everyone would gather and everyone in the whole village would be in ecstasy. Krishna Leela, Ram Leela, completely absorbed in spiritual tattva. And then one day, of course, Ek Chakra, had a reputation. The glories of the Chakra began to spread. This is a wonderful village. It's so dharmic. All the pastimes of Radha and Krishna daily being performed. Everyone in ecstasy. So one day, a sannyasi appears. 
And, you know, he's a traveling sannyasi. They travel and they preach and they do programs in the house, houses of different householders. So he came and stayed there for some time. And the residents of Akchakra Gram, they are so dharmic, they're so purified from the association of their children. <laughs> who were performing all these pastimes and putting the parents in this ecstatic, blissful mood. So they were so happy to, to show the Dharma, the Vaishnav behavior towards this sannyasi. And Harai Pandit especially, because he, was, he became the most very prominent person in the village because it was his son, Nityananda, that was enlivening everybody. So everybody was saying to Harai Pandit, your son is the most amazing, you and your wife. What pastimes had you performed in your previous life that you could get such a wonderful son? So he was being glorified. So then the sannyasi, it was time for the sannyasi to move on. So Harai Pandit approached him and said, thank you so much for coming here. We've loved your association and you've enlivened us and we want to reciprocate we want to give you something, whatever you want, you please tell us, and we'll be so happy to give to you. As, as our way of thanking you for coming and sh sharing your dharmic, your dharma with us. So the sannyasi said, really? You really want to, you really sh sure about this? Oh yeah, whatever you want, we'll tell you. We'll give it to you. No, you don't really mean it. No, 100%. She said, well, you know, I'm a sannyasi traveling alone. I don't have a brahmachari assistant. I really would like one. And I can't imagine anyone who would be better than your son, Nityananda. So if you want to give me some benediction, you please give me this boy so that he can travel with me. And Harai Pandit was in shock. No! Ah! Please, anything else, anything else, I'll give you anything else, please don't take away our Nityananda. But he, the, the sannyasi had spoken, and Harai Pandit realized, I've given my word, and now he's spoken, how can I go back on my word? So with a broken heart, he agreed, and his wife, of course, she was also brokenhearted, but she, being the wonderful chaste lady that she was, she said, whatever my husband says, I will follow. You know, whatever you will think is best to do, I accept that 100%. So, that sannyasi left and took Nityai with him. That was the end of Lord Nityananda's childhood pastimes. And a few months later, what happened? Harai Pandit and his wife left their bodies because they couldn't live in separation of Nityananda. They were plunged into such misery and such despair and such lamentation that they could no longer maintain their lives. And this sannyasi's name is never mentioned in any Shastra. Who knows why his name is never mentioned? His name is never mentioned because he caused such great lamentation in the village of Ekchakra. Because he caused the disappearance, the passing of Harai Pandit and Padmavati. That they don't want to mention his name because some people may curse him. <laughs> Better we just say one wonderful sannyasi, we're not going to mention his name. Because we don't want anybody to say anything negative about him. Because out of great pain and suffering that we lost our nitai, we may say something negative about that person. So it was best left unsaid. The historians, the chronolo the, the people that, that um, what's the word? Chronicled the history. They just decided we'll leave his name out. In the same way, when you when you look at Sri Haridas Thakur, it's never mentioned who is his guru. 
But he was born in a Mohammedan family. He was a Muslim. And then all of a sudden now he's the topmost Vaishnava. Who, who's his guru? It's never mentioned. Why is it never mentioned? Because according to the Mohammedan, the, the Muslim dharma, anybody converts someone from Muslim dharma to another dharma, that's haram, death. So they will never mention the name of that guru of Haridas Thakur because some crazy, you know, fanatic <laughs> uh, person will try to do harm. That you converted a Muslim to a Hindu? Kill. But we can understand if we study the Shastra and go deeply into these things, we can begin to understand who these people are, even though their names aren't mentioned. So I'll first mention about Haridas Thakur, his gurus never mentioned. But if you look at Haridas Thakur's life, who he associated with and how he associated with everybody, how he associated with Advaita Acharya, how he associated with Nityananda. He associated with them like God brothers do. Nityananda associated with the great Acharya like God brother. Nityananda and Haridas Thakur went out together as God brothers. Therefore, when we look at who was the guru of Advaita Acharya, it's Madhavendra Puri. Therefore, we can conclude that the only person who was powerful enough to convert a Mohammedan to become the Namacharya would have to be, his name would never be mentioned in Shastra, but if he's the guru, if he's the god brother of Advaita Acharya, then it must be Madhavendra Puri. And if Nityananda also it behaves with the Dvaita Acharya as a god brother, then they must have the same guru also. Because in those days, everything was done according to, uh, uh, we say in, in, in English, according to the, the etiquette. What is the word in? Uh, Sadachar. Okay, that, that's the etiquette. Huh? Thank you. <laughs> Everything was a paka sadakchar. So you wouldn't, you only behave like Nityananda and Advaita Acharya because they're God brothers, joking and, and sometimes it seems that they were poking fun at each other and insulting each other, but they were guru bhai. But they would never do that in any other relationship. So Nityananda, Nitai, leaves with this sannyasi, and the next thing we know, He's with another sannyasi, Madhavendra Puri. Now, was he another sannyasi or was he the same sannyasi? This is the question I've been asking and I've been trying to understand. So if we look at uh, Nitai, what happened? He left B Bengal, traveled towards Braj, and then traveled down to South India and stayed in South India, especially in Udupi where he associated with Lakshmipati Tirtha. Now we also know that Madhavendra Puri was living in Govardhan. And he also was associating with Lakshmipati Tirtha. He was also down there in Udupi. <laughs> Were they there at the exact same time? Or did they miss each other? I. I think that they were there at the same time because they were both there for some time. Now, we know that our Sampradaya is known as the Brahma Madhva Gaudiya Vaishnava Sampradaya, that we're connected to the Madhvas somehow. And that connection to the Madhvas is through Lakshmipati Tirtha. So some people say that, or some people believe that Madhavendra Puri took sannyas from Lakshmipati Tirtha, and that's the connection. However, every sannyasi in the Madhva line is a Tirtha. There's no Puris. And when you look at the, when you go to Udupi, 
And you see the list of all the sannyasis after Makshupati Tirtha, there's other Tirthas, there's never, there's never a Madhva, Madhavendra Puri there. So Madhavendra Puri took sannyas from someone else. We don't know. Maybe Dina Bandhu knows. No. But he took from a, a Puri Sampradaya, not a Tirtha Sampradaya. And Nityananda was there also. And some people say that Nityananda took sannyas from Lakshmi, I mean, was initiated by Lakshmi Pati Tirtha. But I can't believe that he was initiated by Lakshmi Pati Tirtha because if he was, an Advaita Acharya and Haridas Thakur would have honored him as their Param Guru. But they behaved like God brothers. So it's not possible that he was initiated by Lakshmi Pati Tirtha. And he spent a lot of time with Madhavendra Puri, so he must have been initiated by Madhavendra Puri. Madhavendra Puri was the most profound and most powerful Vaishnava of that time. When Lord Chaitanya was questioned by different devotees about what is the truth, what is the tattva, He would always say, he would always quote the shloka that Yudhisthira quoted, that Yudhisthira quoted, Mahajana uh, Yenegata Sapanta, that we follow in the footsteps of a great Vaishnava. And because when, when Mahaprabhu was asked why we do like this, why we do like this, why we believe like this, why we're different than Madra Sampradaya, why we're different from Ramanuja Sampradaya, he would always say, Mahajan Oyena Gata Sapanta. And for us, that Mahajan that we always follow is Madhavendra Puri. That's who Lord Chaitanya would say. Now in ISKCON, if they ask us, why are you different than Godiyamat? Why are you different than the, this Sampradaya or that Sampradaya? We will also say, Mahajan Oyena Gata Sapanta. And that Mahajan for us is Srila Prabhupada. Whatever Srila Prabhupada says, that is the tattva for us. And for Lord Chaitanya, whatever Madhavendra Puri proposed, that was the tattva. So the second phase of Lord Nityananda's life was as a Brahma, following the brahmacharya, wearing Gerawa Kapur, saffron cloth, traveling with the sannyasi, traveling all over. And after, he came, after South India, he came back to Braj. And of course, at this time where Nityananda was doing all this, his second phase of his life, where he was traveling everywhere with living in the sannyas lifestyle, although not a sannyasi himself. In Navadweep, Nimai Pandit was still Nimai. He was still a young, much younger. He was still Nimai Pandit. But then, Jagannath Mishra passed away, and a year later, Nimai Pandit went to Gaya to perform the Pinda, the Shraddha ceremony for his father. And there he met Ishwara Puri. And Ishwara Puri knew him because Ishwara Puri was also a traveling sannyasi. And he would travel all over, and he would come to Navadweep, he'd come to Mayapur, and he'd stay in the houses, and he'd preach, and he would stay at the Jagannath Mishra's house. So he knew Nimai as a young boy, and as he was growing up. So when Nimai came to do the pinda for his father, and he was in the, that famous Vishnu Pada temple in Gaya, and Ishwara Puri was there, he said, oh, Nimai, you've come. Yes. Oh, what brings you here? Oh, my father passed on and I'm doing it. And then uh, Nimai said to him, you know, now that my father's passed on and I realize the transitory, how transitory life is, you know, that I think that I really need to take diksha. I think that I'm ready now to take the next step of my life. Will you give me initiation? <coughs> So that's how Nitai 
took initiation from Ishwara Puri. It's a long story, but we're not talking about Lord Chaitanya here. But at that time, when he, after he took initiation and he was given the mantra, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Nimai became a totally different person. <clears throat> he was transformed overnight. In fact, early the next morning, around the Brahma Mahorta time, after he had taken Diksha the evening before from Ishwara Puri, Ishwara Puri was now rising. He was getting ready to do his morning oblations, and he heard a knock on the door. He opened it up, and there was Nimai. Completely, his cloth was all full of dirt and dust. His hair was all disheveled. Was, he looked horrible. And Ishwara Puri was terrified. What happened? Some dacoits have attacked you. Please come in, sit down. What happened? Please tell me everything. And Nimai said, well, his name was Krishna Chaitanya now. He was given the name Krishna Chaitanya when he took uh, Diksha. <clears throat> tell me what happened. So he said, Guru Maharaj, what kind of mantra have you given me? What do you mean? I mean, this is the mantra. This, I, this is the mantra I give to everybody. Why are you saying it? I mean, this is, this is perfectly bona fide. This is shastric. This is dharmic. Why are you asking? I said, well, you gave me that mantra. And I went back to where I was staying after I took diksha. And I started to chant this mantra. And tears started to come to my eyes. And palpitations in the heart. And the hair started to stand up and my body, and I couldn't maintain myself, and I was losing my breath, and I, I was falling over, and I was going mad, and I was thinking, what kind of mantra has my guru given me? And I was just rolling and rolling in the dirt, and I, I completely lost external consciousness. <clears throat> and Ishwara Puri said, this is amazing. Overnight, you're experiencing the astra sattvika bhavas. This takes lifetimes. This is amazing. And so, Sri Krishna Chaitanya was a changed person. And that change, when Nitai, who was here in Braj, in the Braj Bhumi area, he experienced, he felt that change. He realized now. Nimai Pandit is, is now no longer the scholar, but he is the, the avatari, <laughs> the source of incarnations himself, coming to, to perform the Yuga Dharma. So then he left and he went and met him at Nanda Nacharya's house in Nabadweep. So Dina Bandhu has so beautifully told that pastime. And then... <clears throat> Nityananda was side by side with Sri Krishna Chaitanya. But of course at that time Sri Krishna Chaitanya was still a grihasta. And he was but everywhere he went, all over Bengal, people were were saying, Have, do you know what's going on in Navadweep? No, what's happening? Well everyone's there's kirtan going on, they're chanting this mantra, and everyone's going mad in ecstasy. Really? So Every, all the musicians and sadhus would come from all over Bengal and just to experience the kirtans. So Nityananda was there for that. And then they all went back to their towns and villages throughout Bengal and that's how kirtan spread all over Bengal. And then Nityananda said to Lord Chaitanya, now you have to spread it all over India. He said, yeah, I have to do that, but I'm a grihasta. <laughs> No one will accept me as a grihasta. Then take sannyas. <laughs> you know, just put on ghetto a kapur, and immediately everyone will offer you any respects, even if you're bogus, just wearing the saffron cloth. And that's also true today. Just put on the saffron, immediately everyone offers dandavats and gives you donation. They don't know anything about you. It's just a, it's a sadachar. 
So Lord Chaitanya took sannyas <clears throat> from Keshava Bharati, but Lord Nityananda didn't like that. He didn't like that he carried a danda. He didn't like that he was even connected to the Mayavad Sampradaya. <clears throat> and after Lord Chaitanya, of course, he became mad in ecstasy after taking sannyas. And he was saying to Nitai, take me to Vrindavan, take me to Vrindavan. So <laughs> Nitai wanted to take him back to the back to Advaita Acharya. So they would walk along the Ganga and, he'd say, and Nitai would say to Lord Chaitanya, this is the Jamuna, you're in Braj. Oh, ecstasy. <laughs> and then he brought him to the house of Advaita Acharya. And Advaita Acharya had arranged for Sachi Mata to be there. Because Lord Chaitanya had awoken at, after midnight, on the full moon night, when his wife, Vishnu Priya was fast asleep and his mother, Sachi Mata, was fast asleep and he got up quietly and with Nityananda and Chandanacharya and a few others, I uh, forget all their names, they crossed the river and went to Katwa to take Sanyas Diksha. So Sachi Mata, she was distraught completely. So Advaita Acharya wanted to for her to have one last darshan with Nimai, her son. So Nityananda had brought Krishna Chaitanya to Advaita Acharya's house. And when Lord Chaitanya saw his mother, he is now a sannyasi, he offered flat out dandavats to her. He said, oh my mother, please forgive me for the great offense I've committed at your lotus feet. I left you and took sannyas. It's a great offense. I have broken your heart. But this body belongs to you. You have given me this body. So, and you are my mother. You are my authority. You tell me, where should this body reside from now on? So, Matsachi Mata said, then you reside in Puri. Because that's not so far. And I'll always get news from you. Because devotees from Mayapur are always going back and forth to Puri. And so Lord Chaitanya, he took that as his a vow, the word of his mother, and so Puri became his residence, so he could never leave Puri. And that's why he sent Nityananda to go preach in Bengal. Of course, he did take six months off to do Tirtha Parikrama around India, Lord Chaitanya. And when he came back to Puri six years later, did I say six months? I meant six years. Six years, he came back to Puri. And then everyone gathered, and again it was Rathiyatra time, and it was really ecstatic. And then one by one, the devotees would come to see Lord Chaitanya, and he would give them their Prabhudatta Desh. And he was giving everyone their instructions. And then Nityananda came. And we know that Nityananda, he was known as Nityananda Avadut. But he was a different kind of avadut. He was a special avadut. Avadut means that he doesn't follow the social conventions. He's beyond those social conventions. You know, the, the example was given. They would say that if you see Lord Nityananda going into a liquor shop, you only know he's going there to preach. He was an avadut. He would go there to preach and convert people. No one else would do that. Everyone else would stay away from that horrible place. But Nitai, Nitai is an avadut. He would go into that place to preach. He preached to Nagai, Jagai and Madai, as we heard so beautifully from Dinabandhu Prabhu. And he was even attacked. broken pot on the head. But Nityananda was so merciful that Jagai and Madai, they surrendered. They said, he, he's a saint. We've committed a great sin. The Lord Chaitanya came, was about to kill them. And it's very strange. We still refer to them as Jagai and Madai, the two reprobates. But actually, they became Jagadananda and Madhavananda, two greats 
Vaishnavas. And I, I don't feel comfortable referring to them as Jagai and Madai, the two reprobates. I like to think of them as the disciples of Nityananda, Madhavananda, and Jagannananda, who are now Paka Vaishnavas. The same way I like to think of the disciple of Haridas Thakur, who was formerly a prostitute, but then became an exalted devotee. So I never say that, I always say formerly was a prostitute, but now the great Vaishnavi, who's the disciple of Haridas Thakur. So we never want to think of people, what they were before they took initiation, before they came to this line. Because if you thought of me the way I was before I came to this line, you wouldn't want to associate with me. You wouldn't want to even be in the same building as me. But fortunately, by Prabhupada's mercy, when we take Diksha, by the Lord's mercy, when we take Diksha, the past is completely forgotten and we become new personalities, we become spiritualized. So Lord Nityananda also came to see Lord Chaitanya and said, what is my, give me, you instruct me, you're instructing everybody else. You please tell me, what is my Prabhudatta Desh? So Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, yes, I have, I've been thinking about you, Nitai. And there's two things that I'm requesting you to do. Yes, please tell me, whatever you say, I will do. First thing is, I can't go back to Bengal because I promised my mother I'd always stay in Puri. So you go to Bengal and you preach and you make sure that every single person in Bengal becomes a Vaishnava. Yes, I will do, no problem. Yes, I will be happy to do that. What is the second thing? Second thing, I want you to get married. What? Get married? How can I do that? I'm, I don't even know how to talk to a lady. I've worn saffron cloth my whole life. How can I do that? No, you must do that. Because kiba vipa kiba nyasi shudra kene noe. Ye tichna tatpa veta se guru hoi. You have to show that we're beyond all these external things of Varnashram Dharma. When Ramananda Roy was asked by Lord Chaitanya, Please tell me, what is the sadhya, sadhya sar, sarva sadhya sar, what is the essence of dharma? And when he mentioned Varnashram dharma, Lord Chaitanya, that's external. Age kohoar, please go deeper. So, Nishinanda had to accept. I'm going to be grihasta, I have to get married. He was shocked, but he accepted it. Lord Chaitanya is my Lord. Whatever he says, I must do. So he left Puri and went to Bengal. The first place he came to was Koradaha, was the house of Suryada Sarakil. And on his travels, Lord Nityananda got rid of his Gerwa Kapur and put on white, because that's what his Grihastas were. So he went to the home of Suryadas Sarkel because Suryadas knew Nityananda. They, they had relationship, they had pastimes together. So Suryadas noticed he's wearing white, but he didn't want to say anything. He just welcomed him in, please come to my home. You're welcome, stay here. Why are you here? Why you've left Puri? You left Lord Chaitanya. Tell me what happened. Well, he told me to come to preach to stay in Bengal, so my, I'll be here for the rest of my life preaching in Bengal now. Surya says, oh, that's wonderful, that's fantastic. I'm so happy. And again, he didn't say anything about your wearing white. But subsequently, when they were having a, a relaxed moment, Surya Das mentioned, hmm, you know, I see that you're not wearing saffron anymore, you're wearing white. What happened? Do, you, do I need to purchase some dye for you? Or <laughs> no, no, no. I'm wearing white for a specific reason. What is that reason? Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told me to get married. Really? Yeah, he told me to get married. You're going to get married? I have to. Sri Chaitanya told me. Sriyadha said, that's very, very interesting. And Nityananda said, well, what's so interesting about it? 
Well, I have two daughters of marriageable age. I'd like to give you both of them. This would be the most wonderful thing. They could never get a better husband than you. And so Lord Nityananda married Vashudha and Janava. And they became his two wives. And from Janava Mat, well, I mean from Vashudha, he had one issue, a son named Virbhadra. And Virbhadra became a wonderful Vaishnava. He became a guru in his own right later on, on in his life. <clears throat> there was a wonderful Vaishnava with many disciples. But Janava Mata, she decided she didn't want to be a mother. She could be a mother to her stepson, Vashudha's son, but she wanted to be like Sanyasini. So she remained barren and she became like, how do you say it? Because we don't say Sanyasini. She became a renounced woman. What's the word? Sadvi, right, that's the word, Sadvi, thank you. And she was such a great Sadvi that after Lord Nityananda left this planet, she became the number one Vaishnava amongst all the Vaishnavas in India. And she was given a title, Ishwari Devi. Ishwari means she's the controller, the number one head of all the Vaishnavas everywhere. And what did she do? She was empowered by Nityananda. I'm just the association of Nityananda. We already know how anybody who had the association of Nityananda became completely transformed. She became so powerful. She traveled all over India. She came to Braj to meet the six Goswamis. And in the temples that they had established, there was the Govinda Temple, Madan Mohan Temple, Sham Sundar Temple, Damodar Temple. And she came and she said, where's Radharani? There's no Radha. So she inspired that, they, <laughs> that all the deities would have their Radha. We'd have Radha Govinda, Radha Sham Sundar, Radha Damodar, Radha Madan Mohan. That was the first thing she did. Another thing that she did was, we all, you know, everyone in India just says the Gayatri Mantra. There's one Gayatri Mantra. Om Bhur Bhuvasva Tat Savitur Varenyam. Everybody knows that mantra. She added the other mantras. Five other mantras. The only we chant in our Gaudiya Vaishnava Sampradaya came from Janava, I mean, uh, Ishwari, Janava Mata. Ishwari Devi. Sadvi, Sadviji. Then she went to Radhakund. She, she lived by a tree, not just a few steps away from where Raghunath, Raghunath Das Goswami had his bhajan kuti, or she had her bhajan kuti, but under a tree. Such a great Vaishnavi by the association of Nityananda. Therefore, Daronita charana dukani, Daronita charan dukani, Daronita charan dukani. I've got to hold on to those two lotus feet of Lord Nityananda as my life and soul. Otherwise, Radha Krishna Paitenai. So, Sri Nityananda Prabhu Ki Jai. Thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Harinam Sankirtan Ki Jai, Samaveta Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai, Gaur Premanandi, Hari Hari Bo.